We lost everything, all our pictures we had. My kids growing up in life, just to lose everything that you never thought was so important. Like Anisha, many of the people you're about to meet are homeless. They may not have the means to afford a home, but they all have the power to rebuild in some way. One way to prevent homelessness is to start by building affordable homes. A global organization called Youth Build recruits troubled teens and helps them complete their education. Brick by brick, they build affordable housing for low-income families and rejuvenate once barren fields into vegetable gardens. I think it's not helpful in any part of our country to have neighborhoods that are full of crime and poverty. It makes sense to concentrate block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, to really change communities and make them as strong as they can be for the young people and the, and the old people that live there. If you can worry about your people, then you can worry about all the other things. And I think like a lot of problems that the world has starts with their people. And it's due to, it's due to the lack of support. It's like neglecting your own society. Frederick, a homeless youth, once tangled in the drug world, was not the only one who saw the need to build relationships in his hometown, Chicago. Hannah Bonham helps bring the community together each week through brunches or barbecues. Members from all different backgrounds attend, from those who have a lot to those who are homeless. People from wealth can come into a situation where people don't have wealth and, and to connect and to see that they both need each other. There's a lot of stereotypes about what causes um, homelessness and I feel like people have these set ideas and what I've really found is that it's really a lack of a support system over anything. And so all of us go through hard times but we all have a support system. You know a lot of us, like myself, our family is absolutely not involved. So a lot of, of homeless people think, well, nobody cares, nobody can help me, because they only expect their family to help. Courtney lives in the Volunteers of America Family Emergency Shelter with her five-year-old son, Jonathan. VOA provides Courtney and her son with shelter and daily meals, as long as Courtney takes advantage of the program's job hunting resources. There are resources that help people like us that will steer you in the right direction if you follow the simple guidelines. All those guidelines are is guidelines for life, for living. Once I got into the program and I started working with the program, it gave me a determination to want to find me a job, to want to succeed, want to want better things for myself. Peggy volunteers at Transitions, a retail store created by her shelter, the Center for Women in Transition. All proceeds from the store go to the shelter. We have the store for two reasons. We have the store for people to shop, and then we also have the store set up as a job training site for not only the women that live at the center, but also the people in the community. Nobody's no better than nobody. We're all the same here. You know, we're all on the same page, we're all working for the same thing. I know there is hope when, for one, look at other people who get out of here and move on to a house. They were right where I was at. They started out right where I was at. And they have gotten out and they've gotten a house and they've gotten jobs. I never give up hope. It's all I've got. I basically got into the drugs real fast. Whatever I saw, I wanted to get it. And I could, and I did, but like, it wasn't the right way. And it was, it was like, I'm risking my, my whole life for a couple dollars when I can be doing the right thing and not risking my life and still get what I want. It's time to focus on me and do what I have to do to you know, accomplish the things that I won't see fit. 
After completing a job training program through his shelter, the Night Ministry, Frederick got a job as a mechanical technician. One thing the Night Ministry has taught me to do is to plan things. If you set goals, then, you know, set small goals, you can reach the bigger goals. Donating socks to people in need is just one of those smaller goals that can have a big impact on people who don't have much. Before I was homeless, I didn't understand the aspects of little things. When we lost everything in our fire, we didn't have even socks to put on the kids' feet to send them to school. So when you're in a situation where you really don't have anything, it means a lot to someone just to be able to say, okay, my kids have socks for school now. Inesha now has more than just socks for her children. The Focus Outreach Program has provided her with housing for a year and is paying for her education in hopes that she'll be able to provide for herself by next year. The day that I stand outside and had nothing at all, and to now be in a program where they're helping me get back on my feet, it's like so, I mean, I'm sorry, but it means a lot. Rebuilding has many different layers. It is never simple, but we can all make this process easier by rebuilding together. <laughs>